G'day everyone. So I graduated from my university degree at the end of 2021, and since then I've been professionally working in the games industry as a gameplay engineer. Earlier in the year, I spoke about my time at uni and the crazy roller coaster of a journey that I went on, but lots of you were really curious about what came after. So this is the continuation of my story, what life has been like after studying game dev at university. Now, where did we leave off? Ah, that's right, 2021 UTS Game Showcase. Our group made the game Fury of the Pharaohs, a third-person multiplayer shooter inspired by ancient Egypt. It was the culmination of three years of university and we were all really proud of it. There was some tough competition that year, but in particular there were two games made by our unofficial rivals. Deliveroids, an unconventional racing game where you race to deliver packages all over a futuristic city, and Colosseum, a light-hearted multiplayer arena fighting game where you slap people with fish. Colosseum would go on to win the showcase, and while I would have loved to win, I was still super proud of what we managed to accomplish. Fun fact, Colosseum was actually made by this guy, and if you haven't checked out my previous video, the two of us faced off in our own mini game jam that was named GDS3, a throwback to our final year subjects Game Design Studio 1 and 2. A lot of you might be wondering, was it all worth it? Did I get a job after three tough years at uni, especially since our game wasn't even voted best on the day? Yes it was worth it, and yes I did. So our showcase was in late November, but even before then throughout September and October, I was applying to a lot of open game dev positions. I think in that two and a half month span I had maybe three or four interviews, and I didn't get any of them. It definitely was disheartening, but I was determined to not let it shake me, and I kept working hard on our project. And about midway through November, I was contacted by someone called Nick. Nick worked at and had reached out to UTS to find game dev students to hire as interns. And Nick recognised my name and sent me a message first. Because here's the thing, Nick and I already knew each other. Let's go back a bit. At the start of 2021, I worked at a UTS startup company that aimed to make games for people on the disability spectrum and help teach them life skills that they struggled with. I was an intern working as an engineer helping make the story based game, and Nick was the narrative writer. We got along really well, but he left midway throughout the year. So when he saw the list of names given to him by my professor, he knew who I was and what my work ethic was like, and it probably didn't feel as much of a gamble reaching out to me because I wasn't a complete stranger. Anyway, Nick set up an interview with me and the CEO, and I'm not gonna lie, it was intimidating. The CEO was a very nice guy, but he's very pragmatic, says things how they are. But in a sense, it was good. I knew exactly where I stood and there were no false hope or expectations. A recurring theme in my previous interviews, and maybe one of the reasons I didn't progress as far in others, is that I was still torn between the engineering and design side of game development, whereas from what I saw, junior roles tended to be one or the other. And so I had a decision to make, engineering or design. Now just because I had to choose one didn't mean that I had to abandon the other. In fact it's quite useful being an engineer with design skills or a designer with engineering fundamentals. But when starting out, spreading yourself too thin can hold you back. So as you could probably guess, I ended up going with engineering. There were many reasons why I chose engineering. It was my main strength and I had a better understanding of it, and it came quite naturally to me, and I just felt like there were more opportunities for growth. So from there I was given a programming test that I had to complete in a week. I had to make a grid-based pathfinder that could swap between two modes, top-down and platformer. Each mode had their own movement restrictions, and on top of that, I had to make a custom tool for making the levels and save them with JSON. It was a little nerve-wracking because I'd never used JSON before, but thankfully, I was able to sort it all out. Following that, I had a very light on tech interview with the lead engineer and another senior engineer, and we went over my project and some other general Unity stuff. They were really happy with it, so I was passed on to the final interview. This was with a lady called Serena, and she was the head artist. Can't lie, I was a bit confused why I was meeting with an artist, but hey, I wasn't going to question it. We mostly spoke about me, what types of games I like to play and what I do in my free time, stuff like that. What I later found out was that that interview was unofficially dubbed the Vibe Check. Basically, it was to see if I had a personality, that I wasn't a heartless machine and would fit in well with the company. And Serena thankfully determined that I was a good fit. I signed with the company and was invited to their Christmas party to meet everyone, which was really cool. All in all, I'd say it took me about two to four weeks to go through everything, from the programming test to the various interviews. Everything wrapped up early mid-December and I started at the beginning of January. It was chaotic to say the least, I was learning so many new things in such a short period of time, I felt like I didn't have any time to process it all. But I slowly found my feet and after three months I joined full time and I've been working there ever since. Now that was my story, but I know plenty of other people who work in games but took completely different paths to me. 
as I mentioned at the end of my previous video, about 7 out of my class of 60 work in the games industry. Both myself and the artist from my group got jobs pretty much right out of the gate, myself as an engineer and her as a designer, but that's not always the case. For another two of those seven, it took time for them to land those lucrative game positions. For one, it took him about a year to get a position as a junior game designer, and another took him a year and a half to get a junior engineering position. While they didn't have a game dev job, they continued to make games and hone their craft, and now both of them are doing really well and love what they do. There was also a really talented designer in my course, who was very unfortunate and placed in a poor group who didn't put a lot of effort in, but he was confident in his abilities and could talk about the design of his game, a Scribble.io-esque party game, and how things would have interacted and worked in an ideal setting. He embraced that game development isn't perfect, and he actually landed a level designer position really quickly after uni ended as well. One of my friends, the main developer of Deliveroids and Outside the Box, actually transitioned to the academic side of things, and became a lecturer slash tutor of the game development course that we took. And another has ended up working as a technical artist and director at an animation studio. I also know plenty of people who took the games degree, but chose not to go into the games industry for various reasons. But they all say that the skills they learned from the course, like user interaction and design, still help them with their new careers and help them provide a unique perspective that a lot of other developers simply don't have. And then there are students who don't get their dream position right away, but take up similar positions like QA testers. This experience can often lead to a career switch to engineering or design, because QA testers have such a deep understanding of how games work and are such a valuable asset to the team. It just goes to show that there isn't one set path that you have to follow, some random equation that gives you a job. Even though all of us had the same end goal, we each took our own path to get there. Quite a common question that I got was did I publish any of my games? And the answer is... almost. So in December of 2021, my team met with some publishers at a company called Voodoo through our professors from UTS. Now, Voodoo publishes mobile games, particularly in the hyper-casual market. And while our recent success was with Fury of the Pharaohs, it surprisingly wasn't suited for mobile. But our previous game, Project Angel, kinda worked. Even though our hearts were probably still with Fury of the Pharaohs more, we wanted to try our best with the opportunity in front of us. We had another meeting with the publishers, and in early January, we started turning Rescue Angel from PC to mobile. So here's how it worked. We would make a prototype and upload it to Voodoo's publishing program. They would then test the game for about 4 days and pay for the marketing during this time as well. If the game wasn't a hit, no loss for us. We could even try again with another idea. But if it was a success, they'd look at publishing the game. It was a win-win with no real downside. We were all really excited and keen to start, but there was just one issue. Time. Here's the thing. When we started converting the game to mobile, myself and our artists had already started working full-time. For me, it was my first full-time job, and it was overwhelming and took a lot of getting used to, especially with all of the knowledge that was being dropped on top of me. After 8 straight hours of that, it was hard for me to sit down and continue working in Unity. The group suffered from that. Especially since I was the unofficial leader and main motivator, it fell to me to push everyone forward. And to be honest, sometimes I just didn't have any energy or f to give to the project. I know that sounds kinda bad, but sometimes life just gets in the way of these things. However, things dragged on, and near the end of January, we had our first proof of concept prototype ready, and the publishers seemed really happy with it. But by the time February rolled around, another two members of the group were starting back up at uni and had assignments. And by March, we had lost all the drive to finish the project, and we gave up on it. I'm disappointed we were never able to finish, it would have been really cool to have one of our games published, and it still is a goal of mine to publish my very own game. I can't speak for everyone, but the timing was just not right for me and sometimes things are just not meant to be. I only really got a two week break between starting my job after five straight semesters of uni. I was wrecked and needed to recharge and undertaking that project was not the way to do it. It's funny the way things work out. I always wondered if we were never presented with the voodoo opportunity, maybe we all would have pushed to get Fear of the Pharaohs on Steam, but more likely we were just going to burn out from that too. We can't change the past and unfortunately both of those games have probably been put to rest for now but I think it was time for all of us to move on to newer and bigger things. I still love Fear of the Pharaohs and Rescue Angel, especially the amazing worlds we were able to weave together, and who knows, maybe I'll revisit them or draw inspiration from those worlds in another video game in the future. In my opinion, one of the hardest parts of working in the games industry is getting that first foot in the door. The games industry is quite small, so don't be discouraged if things don't happen right away. Some might say I'm lucky for being where I am, and maybe to an extent that's true but myself and all those other people from my class who work in game development 
worked really hard to get where we are. Juniors are often hired for their potential, not their experience. So if you have a good eye for design or a good understanding of engineering and can show off your passion for making games, it will go a really long way. If you don't get that job right away, don't give up. You might just be one interview away from landing that position you've always dreamed of. I know it can be disheartening getting rejected from a job you really want. I've had my fair share of them. But try not to let rejection curb your enthusiasm for making games. They can actually be our biggest lessons. It took me failing multiple interviews to make me realize that I needed to choose between engineering and design. Everyone has their own journey. And just because yours may not look like someone that you know or see on YouTube, that doesn't mean that it's wrong. We often compare ourselves to others living a life we dream of and can get discouraged when our lives take a drastic turn. We all have a plan of how we want things to work out in our lives, and things don't always turn out how we'd like them or expect them to. It's important to keep your options open and take advantage of the opportunities in front of you. My advice is to embrace the chaos and take some chances. Who knows, you might end up finding something that you love even more than you thought you would. I hope this video has given some insight into my life after university and helped show what goes on behind the scenes after graduating. To all of you out there who dream of working in game development one day, keep your heads up. Do your best to embrace the roller coaster of a journey you're on, and I know if you keep working at it and never give up, good things will happen. I wanted to quickly say a massive thank you to everyone for helping me reach 500 subscribers. It's honestly mind blowing to me. I'm grateful to everyone who's watched my videos and subscribed, and here's to a thousand. That's everything for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers, everyone.